478. It's actually a private member's bill, and it was introduced by conservative MP James Bazan. It would apply to murders that involve abduction and sexual assault. Supporters say it's about giving peace to the families of the victims, but will more guaranteed time in jail for murderers really accomplish that goal? Joining me now, Manitoba Conservative MP James Bazan. Good to see you, Mr. Bazan. Good afternoon. Why do you think the country needs this bill? Well, you know, this is about really uh, reaching out to the families of victims who have been brutally murdered and wanting to ensure that the families don't have to go to these unnecessary parole board hearings when these type of offenders who have sadistically kidnapped, raped, and then murdered an individual never get released. So uh, it is unnecessary for these families to appear at these parole board hearings. There's no need to have them. Uh, people like Clifford Olson has used them in the past to uh, re-victimize the families and uh, play his own little games to his own uh, gratification, which I find completely uh, disgusting. We spoke to Catherine Latimer, the executive director of the John Howard Society. Yes. Here's what she told us, and obviously they don't, they don't support the bill. There's no evidence based on public safety to constrain the discretion of the parole board given the government has just this week announced consultations on the Victims' Bill of Rights uh, that will no doubt be addressing the victim's role in the justice and correction system. It seems premature to be moving forward with individual legislation, re legislative reforms for victims while the comprehensive consultations are underway. What's your reaction? Well, I can tell you that Canadians don't want to see these types of individuals on the street, whether it's the Clifford Olsons, the Paul Bernardos, the Robert Pictons. These are the worst of society that have committed the most horrible offenses that we could imagine. And so we're looking at a very small group of individuals that the parole board in the past have not released. And what we want to do is empower the courts. This isn't a mandatory minimum sentence. This is being able to give discretion to the judge and jury to make recommendations on sentencing and uh, allow some peace of mind for the family knowing that they can have these um, brutal sadistic murderers uh, incarcerated for up to 40 years. But given, so, so, that so they, they flexibility. but given that incarceration is the most powerful tool at the disposal of the government, as you know, uh, we, there's no death penalty here, shouldn't the state have to periodically justify the imposition of incarceration at that level despite the heinousness of the crime? Look, at, we know from history that these individuals never qualify. So it's an, a whole unnecessary process that just re-victimizes these families over and over again. Every two years, it starts uh, at year 10 if you're only a second degree murderer. It, when the Fane Hope Clause was still around, it started at year 15. And then at year 23 of a life sentence, it happens every two years. So there's no need to go through this ongoing dragged out procedure that c creates these situations where the family has to agonize over whether or not this, this murderer is ever going to be released back to society. But and more importantly, that will have them live through the terror of having to relive the horrific deaths that their children and loved ones went through. The NDP obviously don't support this. Uh, Francoise Boivin's office said to us, this is another incident of smoke and mirrors from the Conservatives presenting an ineffective bill that won't help the vast majority of victims. Few families will benefit from the bill. It will affect only one or two percent of criminals at best. What do you make of that? Oh, I was kind of hoping the NDP would, would stand up and support this bill. You know, when I was putting this bill together, we were going through the situation where the Tory Stafford case was fresh on everyone's mind. That Terry McClintock and Rafferty uh, were just in the process of being sentenced. Uh, then we had Russell Williams, who brutally murdered two individuals. And we lived through that uh, whole process of him going to trial in a rather expedited fashion. But then we had Clifford Olson who was dying in prison. And I heard the cries of Sharon Rosenfeld on the radio talking about how terrible it was to have to go to all these parole board hearings that Olson used to toy and taunt the, the victim's families, talking but, about but how he murdered I'm them. I'm not and trying so, to justify so, that. So, so, so we're talking about a very small group of individuals this, that my bill is, is targeted at, and Sharon Rosenfeld and her testimony and other victims of crime that I've talked to who have to live through this is the impetus of me bringing this bill forward. And, and I appreciate the, how horrific those are, crimes are, and, and everybody feels for the victims, but you know in the law there's that saying that 
hard cases makes for bad law. And you know that Canada is a signature to the Rome Statute on the International Criminal Court, Section 3, and I'll read it to you right here. When the person has served two-thirds of the sentence, or 25 years in the case of life imprisonment, court should review the sentence to determine whether it should be reduced. Be continued before the time. Section 12 of the Canadian Charter of Rights Against Cruel and Unusual Treatment of Yes, my point is, we're signatories to this, to horrific these crimes are. Did it, was your, does your bill please, or does it violate uh, things I, that we're already signatory to? I fully the way the bill is worded, by giving discretionary powers to the court. These are mandatory minimums. We'll read Section 12 Charter. Uh, this is fashion bill and bill C-48. So we know that those are already standing up under constitutional challenge. So uh, I think that that isn't an issue. What we want to do, and this isn't about punishment, because we know that these individuals don't get released. This is a small group of those that are incarcerated that we are targeting. And, and, and we know that the Pro Board has always held them in uh, institutions because they are a threat to society if they're ever released. Right, so this is about making sure that the victims' families and that their rights are respected and they don't have to live through the horrific experience of facing these individuals every two years, but they will go there every two years if that's what's needed. All right, I got to leave it there. Uh, Mr. Bazzetta, a very interesting uh, topic uh, and, and a very interesting bill to discuss. I appreciate you coming on today. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Evan. Coming up on Power and Politics, did the Natural Resources Minister Joe Oliver play smart politics or commit a blunder when he took shots at a renowned climate change scientist, James Hansen? Hansen was supposed to be on the show. We had technical issues. We just played you that clip of him calling the Conservatives Neanderthals, Joe Oliver calling Hansen nonsense. Point of order strategists take that issue on. Tim Powers, Kathleen Munker are standing by. Stay with us. Common Sense Money Talk from Tube.